Mary, let me let me ask you. You not only are you someone who, because of your profession, would be able to offer us some advice on how to deal with some of these situations, but you personally have had depression issues in your family involving your sister, also your daughter. Could you tell us tell us your story, if you would? I'd like to preface by saying that um, I know everyone in this audience has said I've had a, a broken heart. And I think that we need to realize that you also had a broken brain. When you grieve because the boy said no to you, you grieve because you didn't get the girl you wanted, you grieve because you didn't get that grade you wanted, or you grieve because you lost something that you valued. We all have depression. It is a common cold of psychiatry, you know. And I think it's real important for us, you know, he says he's the only one on the panel that's depression. And he's the only one that says it. <laughs> okay, I, I give you all permission to acknowledge that you get sad. I give you permission to say that you have the blues. I give you permission to say that you had a bad hair day today, tomorrow, and for a week now. <coughs> um, we call it all kinds of things. In my particular situation, my daughter is 17 years old. She'll be 18 in a few weeks. And last November, she took a, a shot of Depo Provera. Within two weeks, our life changed upside down. She did not, she was a 3.8. UVA, JMU, GMU bound, William and Mary, or American University was her preference. Debate captain of her team, et cetera, et cetera. Cool kid, right? She didn't want to go to school. She wanted to drop out. She didn't want to get out of bed. Our routine was every morning I'd give it 5.30, make her cereal, wait on her, help her get dressed, and say, today you'll go to school. By quarter to seven, she was back in bed. We took her to the doctor and said it's a depo prevera. It's a hormones. This kid's changed. Her hair fell out. Her acne came. She bled. That was our plight from November until March. November until March. She didn't want to go to her senior activities. Nothing. And you say, wow. It's the time that you put in your college applications. You apply for colleges, right? You're doing all this fun senior things. She heard from her doctor to go see a psychiatrist because she was crazy. She was depressed. She needed to see a psychiatrist. There's nothing that the, she saw a nurse practitioner, gynecologist. She was told for months, that was all in her head, that she needed to be on medication. She was put on Depico, Xanax, Lexapro, Ritalin, Zan, uh, Ativan for anxiety, calcium, and iron pills. And that was her little drugstore she took every day. Around December, we took her to see a real gynecologist who took her in her hand, looked into her big blue eyes and said, sweetheart, it's not in your mind. You're not crazy. It is because of the hormone. The kid wept. She went to school some days and the kids would say, Caroline, you're so depressed. Looking at you, you make me want to kill myself. Kids were very cruel to this audacious girl, who only months before was in the homecoming court. Does that make it a little bit more personal to you? Can you see how we all impact and we all can feel it? My sister, in the other case, my sister did have bipolar disorder. She was very beautiful, Dolly Parton-esque, <laughs> okay? She was a, a person you would say was as beautiful inside as she was outside. And boy, could she dance. My sister rode the roller coaster that they talk about, the highs and the lows. And some people heard me say this. When you're a family member with someone who's depression, they may be in the front seat, but you're right behind them. Because when they go down, you go down. When they're up, you don't see them much, but you just wait for the down. She's with angels now, and I'm okay with that, because she doesn't suffer. And I know that you're all sitting here, but let me tell the details of her death. Well, it's not pleasant, but she's with God now. And I will tell you one thing as a psychotherapist. I have met so many teenagers and young adults, I'm talking to you now, that your friends have told you that they wanted to kill, kill themselves. You talked to them. <coughs> and you told them, they told you, don't tell anybody. Well, I will tell you this, I'd rather you have one angry friend who hates you for breaking their secret and will never talk to you again 
and they harbor their hatred to you for the rest of their life, then you keep in that secret. And to you parents out there, your kids do talk to teenagers to say this. And I bet you I'm talking to most of you in this room. There's probably not anyone in this room who hasn't heard from someone saying, I wish I was dead, who started giving their things away, who sort of say their long goodbyes, and that you knew they weren't doing so well. So I urge you again, that's a secret that you'd rather than be angry at you or tell them their secret. At least they're alive. You have, you have given all of us permission to say that we do get sad, maybe we do get depressed. Um, but in the interaction that we have with friends and family all the time, how do you know it's something more than just the bad hair day? How do you know that it's crossed the line? I think what I did say about permission, as you have permission to have an organ in your head that has over 200 chemicals, and if they aren't firing right, that, that would be the same as you having a diabetes. When you have diabetes, your, your pancreas doesn't make enough insulin, so you take insulin or you watch your sugar intake. When your brain with 200 chemicals doesn't make enough of something, you have behavioral symptoms. They could be worthlessness, helplessness, just, you just don't want to get up and do. Your thoughts maybe get blocked. You start wanting to sleep more or not sleep at all. You may self-medicate with pot. Yeah, I know that one. Or alcohol. Your bartender and your nails, nails tech will know exactly what you're going through before your parents and your family do. Because you talk to them. Well, say you have a friend or a family member who hasn't said the words, gee, I think I'm, I'd like to kill myself. But you suspect this is someone who's going through a bad something. What do you do about it? I think you said it best. You know, one thing I asked my daughter, because I told her I'd be <coughs> talking all her, putting all her stuff on the street. I said, Caroline, what got you through this? Was it the medication? She said, that helped. I said, what was it? She said, my family. You guys never gave up on me. You never gave up, and it was frustrating. One month became two, two became three, and three became four. And what this young lady's saying about it came back with a vengeance. You don't give up. You don't give up. I call it like a Forrest Gump story. You know, you try to keep supporting. You kind of still be there, and it does wear on you. And as a caregiver, it does take a toll on you. We kind of say that in psychiatry. It's like it's a contagious. Your caregiver gets depressed from taking care of the depression. But I will tell you, hold your family close. Let them know that you love them. Sometimes they won't even care that you're saying that because they don't feel like they, they deserve your love. But just don't give up on them. 